Yeah, the NYPD actually has X-ray vans in service on the streets of New York. This may be our biggest turd yet. I'm Joe, and this is Next Level Bullshit. Headlines broke again the other week as New York City Police Commissioner Bill Bratton would not elaborate on the use of x-ray vans. Those are issues I'd prefer not to divulge to the public at this time. I will not talk about anything at all about this. It falls into the range of security and counterterrorism activity that we engage in. Uh, isn't that why we have Homeland Security? And since when did the NYPD Counterterrorism Bureau become a spy agency? So what's the deal? We went from stop and frisk to stop and get radiated? We first learned of the vans in December of 2014 in Grable versus New York City Police Department. ProPublica reporter Michael Grable filed a Freedom of Information request to get more details on the risks to the public health from these military-grade x-ray machines and what the NYPD actually does with them. Guess what? Two years later, he wins! But the NYPD still refused to release any information about the x-ray vans. What we do know about the vans is they're called Z Backscatter Vans. It's a product sold by Americans Science and Engineering, which offers a wide array of inspection products and solutions. The Z Backscatter Van is the most maneuverable, versatile, and successful cargo and vehicle screening system on the market. Its easy-to-read image quickly and clearly reveals threats like explosives, drugs, currency, and trade fraud items such as alcohol and cigarettes. The vans also come in Mercedes Sprinter or Ford 550 flavors as well. Now, according to the safety info on American Science and Engineering, which we're taking with a grain of salt, dose to cargo, less than 0.1 micro sievert per scan, equivalent to 10 micro rem. Is that good? Well, according to xrayanswers.com, it's a typical chest x-ray, which isn't a lot. But we don't know how this shit is being used. As they drive by on the street, do you get the equivalent of 10 chest x-rays? 20? 30? More? The issue is, we don't know. Now, there's a few legit applications for this product. We can probably safely assume that it's used mostly on the harbor scanning incoming cargo. But... Commissioner Bratton's lack of clarification lets our imaginations run wild. It's kind of scary that the NYPD could legally be driving around the city scanning people in cars for guns, cigarettes, and drugs, or hot bods just like at the airports. The real reason he probably didn't say anything is because he can't say anything. It's not uncommon for police agencies to enter into non-disclosure agreements with the manufacturer of these products. Take Stingray for instance. Developed by Harris Corporation, this handheld device mimics a cell phone tower and tricks phones into connecting to it. Once connected, the handler can download personal information such as your mobile subscriber identity, intercept your communications, and your call history. This little device has been used a few hundred times in Florida without any search warrants. And we learned about this in the case of Florida vs. James L. Thomas. In the early minutes of the hearing, on August 23, 2010, representing Florida State, Catherine Ray responded to a compelled disclosure of evidence motion to disclose how Stingray was used to locate the suspect. I think that Investigator Corbett would tell you that there is a non-disclosure agreement that they've signed with the company. Technical Operations Unit Investigator Christopher Corbett has been trained by Harris Corporation to operate the communications equipment. The manufacturer of the equipment provides approximately a six-day training program. In addition to that, I attended numerous classes on the use of cell phones and various communications, communication items for locating persons. Now, this case is interesting because it shows everything right and wrong about Stingray. Let's look at the specifics of the case. On September 12th, 2008, James L. Thomas sexually assaulted and stole a woman's purse, which included a cell phone. The woman reports the incident to the Tallahassee Police Department and gives them permission to track her phone. After getting an approximate location from Verizon, Investigator Corbett suspects the signal is somewhere in the shithole that is Berkshire Manor Apartments. After two hours of quite literally stood in front of every door and window measuring, 
determining that direction of where that signal was emanating from and contacting investigators and advised that we had an apartment. They concluded apartment 251 had the cell phone. Now, instead of obtaining a search warrant in which they would have to disclose their policing techniques, they tricked the homeowner into entering the premise to perform an illegal search. Obviously, for victims, this Stingray device is pretty amazing. But for people just sitting in their apartment with cops looking in their windows, it's some pretty scary shit. Now, to make matters worse, this isn't an exact science. What if the phone happened to be next to a wall and the police raided the wrong apartment and things went sideways? Don't think for an instant that's never happened. But I guess you can improve your odds if you incorporate one of these handy dandy x-ray vans. In addition to these new super powered vans, the NYPD has also been employing license plate scanners as a data collection campaign for their spy program called Domain Awareness. It's a joint venture with Microsoft, you know, that little tech company out of Seattle, whose Windows software also spies on you. The $40 million system gave the NYPD 3,000 cameras and 2,600 radiation detectors and a massive software system to use it. The bullshit here is you're automatically entered in the system and tracked for just being in one of the 3,000 monitored locations. From the New York Civil Liberties Union report, which everyone should read, Without appropriate privacy protections in place, local governments using license plate readers can amass a database of the comings and goings of innocent people over as long of a period of time as they have the capacity for storage. It even share the information with other entities. So the NYPD has the whole big brother thing down. 1984 isn't fiction anymore. It's a reality in New York City. These x-ray vans are just another drop in the bullshit bucket. How do you even begin to combat this? Well, thankfully, we have people like Grable and organizations like the New York Civil Liberties Union and the Brennan Center for Justice trying to check the NYPD's unchecked powers. On October 13th, 2015, the New York Civil Liberties Union filed a motion to leave an amicus brief, which literally means a friend of the court. A person with a strong interest in or views on the subject matter of an action, but not a party to the action, may petition the court for permission to file a brief. And I'll leave you a quote from NYCLU senior staff attorney Mariko Hyros. People should be informed if military grade x-ray vans are damaging their health with radiation or peering inside their homes or cars. I completely agree. So what do you think about the NYPD's use of x-ray vans? Let me know in the comments section below. Now for a reading of the comments. From last week's episode, one of my favorite trolls is back this week. Stimpy Wren writes, NLBS is trying really, really hard to filter its comments. Joe can't hit the delete button fast enough to cover his CIA DOD ass. Okay, first things first. The CIA and the Department of Defense don't get along. So which is it? Second, I didn't delete anything, you goober. Fillmore writes, once again, super wicked vid. Thanks for watching. Now, from our Organic Food is BS video, Shaman Healer writes, I buy organic because of the GMOs. I don't need moth genes in my potatoes, brah. Newsflash, dude. Genetically modified crops can still get classified as organic at Trader Joe's. Now, be sure to follow us on Twitter at TheNLBS. Subscribe to our channel to be notified of all new updates. And if you have an idea for a story, email me anytime at joe at nextlevelbullshit.com. Until next time, stay away from the funny van from Roman, New York.